Gill. Hey, welcome back in. This is the Steve Gill Show. Go to the website, gillreport.com. Click on the Daily Notes button. You can find links to the stories we're talking about. Everybody anticipating the big uh, speech tonight by President Barack Obama as he lays out his uh, jobs plan. We'll, uh, we'll be paying a lot of attention, talking a lot more about that tomorrow. Today, we're talking with Vice President Dick Cheney, former Vice President, his new book, In My Time, a personal and political memoir written with his uh, daughter, Liz Cheney, who's been a guest on this show numerous times in the past. Uh, Mr. Vice President, uh, Don Rumsfeld's book really kind of gave us a personal portrait of him. And so often in politics, and I think it was true with him, it's, it's true of you, a lot of people have these caricatures of who they think you guys are. And I think both in his book and in yours, that personal story, it's amazing for a guy that's been in politics as long as you and he, that most people really don't know much about who you are. And yet you lay out a lot that tells us a lot of who you are, that, that you're not just this sort of public figure. You're a, you're a father, you're a husband, you're a son. I mean, it's there's a lot more to it. Yeah, I think that's true. I uh, I always enjoy that part of uh, biographies when I find a good one. Uh, I tried to match that with uh, that first chapter we call, uh, well, it's after the prologue, which is about... 9-11, but uh, what we call uh, the early years, and um, part of the fun of the book was going back and um, pulling together all those strains in terms of where my family came from and how we got uh, to Nebraska and the early days uh, that I could recall from when uh, Dad was in the Navy in World War II, and we were living in the little town of Sumner, Nebraska with 296 folks with my grandparents, so, so it's fun to dig back into that stuff. And uh, I think some people enjoy finding finding out about uh, public figures, some of that background information. And and I don't think it is any shame on you, um, but but you, you also talk about how you you definitely outkicked your coverage in finding and securing Lynn Cheney, which we're all very proud of you and her for that as right. well. In the book, you started off right with the nine eleven day with, when they literally grab you and 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 thrust you the decision making as you talk about it, the fog of war when there were talk of of planes being shot down and planes going down left and right. There are still folks today, as we approach this 9-11, 10th anniversary, that say, oh, it didn't happen. There wasn't a plane that went into the Pentagon. They're not going to let the facts dissuade them. I mean, they almost have the impression that Dick Cheney was running around laying bombs in, in the towers and blowing them up. How do you feel about about those kinds of attitudes 10 years later still persisting? Well, I, I really don't pay any attention to them, Steve. I, uh, you know, nothing you can do about people like that. Uh, there are just folks in the world who don't want to uh, believe in uh, certain things, and, and uh, they go out of their way to try to find some way to explain it, that, you know, the government did it, um, or to deny that it ever happened. And um, the uh, I'd say I don't lose a lot of sleep over that. Uh, they're too dumb to check the historical record or uh, unwilling to... T- to uh, rely on the facts, that's that's their problem. Or even the admissions of guys like Khaled Sheikh Mohammed. I mean, they're saying they did it, so I mean, it's kind of hard to kind of hard to deny that. As you look right. back ten years ago, I mean, it was a flashpoint that dramatically changed where where the admission in, ad, administration was headed. I mean, everything you thought was going to be your first or second term in office, man, it headed in a completely different direction. Right. No, there's no question. Uh, I think uh, when the president decided to run for president, he assumed he'd be involved in uh, a lot of uh, uh, of work on tax policy and on uh, education, uh, prescription drug benefits, and so forth. Of course, uh, what 9-11 did was force us to spend a lot of time and, and effort and resources on preventing that next attack against the United States. Uh, fortunately, we were successful, but it was um, it became the major, major uh, agenda item, if you will, for our administration. And as you point out in detail in the book, this was not something, uh, whether it was going into into Afghanistan, going into Iraq. These were not decisions that were made cavalierly with, with sort of a Cliff Notes version. These were, were were the product of a lot of discussion and a lot of putting pieces together in the intelligence arena that leaves gaps. That's just the nature of the business. Right. No, that's, uh, that's exactly the way it works. And um, we were fortunate. We had some great people working with us, especially our career military and intelligence personnel. And uh, they did great work for us. Uh, at crucial moments as we went forward. One of the uh, the segments in the book that I think is particularly attuned to when we're having the head of a major labor union talk about, you know, the SOBs in the Tea Party, we're hearing members of the Congressional Black Caucus talk about lynchings and everything. A lot of people are saying the tone and tenor in politics has gotten so much worse in recent years. Maybe it has from the left's perspective. I, I love the, the way you, you phrase it in the book that you used a colorful epithet directed at uh, Patrick Leahy when he was questioning your honor and your integrity. 
is the tone and tenor in politics, you've been in this 40 years, mm -hmm. is it different or is it just cable television now records every snippet, every cell phone records every snippet of what happens and we see more? Well, I, I think uh, you're right there that, that uh, there are a lot of ways in which uh, that uh, that information gets captured now that didn't used to exist. But I can remember the summer of 1968 when I first uh, went down to Washington to rent an apartment to um, live in when uh, we came down, Lynn and I, and, and uh, our daughter uh, arrived in um, September that year. And this was the year we'd had everything from Tet Offensive to uh, the assassinations of Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy and uh, riots in the cities. There'd been some 14,000 federal troops sent into Washington to, to restore order. It was a, a very difficult time in our history. Uh, so when we look back at those years, Sometimes there's a temptation to say, well, everything was smooth and everybody got along. And there were, wasn't a lot of conflict. And uh, yet if you go back and you really take a look at the history of that period as well as many others, in fact, it was a time when there was a lot of strife and turmoil and ferment, if you will, in our political system. And uh, everything was in sweetness and light. The book is in my time. Vice President Dick Cheney with us. As we look at the president speaking tonight, talking about his new jobs plan, the economy is in a shambles. It's interesting. They keep uh, wanting to point the finger blame back at you guys when gas prices were lower, when unemployment was lower, when we still had a triple A bond rating. As you look to the president's comments in his, quote, new jobs plan, I think it's the seventh or eighth. What do you anticipate hearing and do you expect it to be anything different than we've already heard? Well, I don't obviously haven't seen it yet. Uh, I guess he's going to announce it uh well, tomorrow night, I guess it's tomorrow night. I, um, I'm i concerned because I really think the economy is in trouble. I think we've got millions of Americans out there out of work who badly need to be able to find a job. And I think we need to put in place economic policies that will make it easier for the private sector to create more jobs. Uh, I mean, there's a limit to what government can do by way of uh, actually um, hiring people to work for the government. And what I think we need is pretty dramatic tax reform, move in the direction of a uh, situation that allows companies to expand and grow and develop and create jobs that removes the uncertainty that's hanging over the marketplace out there when people don't know whether or not uh, their taxes are going to go up and that we've got a big regulatory burden that's being imposed on everybody that adds significantly to the cost of doing business. I think we've got to go back and and change a lot of that out, do the kind of thing we did in the, in the early Reagan years when we put in place uh, pro-growth policies uh, at the federal level that encouraged uh, our businesses to expand and create jobs. We know what works because we've seen it work in the past. We know what doesn't work because we've seen it fail miserably in the last in the last couple of years. You, you've been out on this book tour, uh, touting your book, visiting with a lot of folks. Uh, to me, one of the highlights of it was when you pulled out your, your heart monitor uh, battery and, and freaked uh, Sean Hannity out the other day. What's What's been the hype, besides maybe that, what's been the high point on the book tour? Well, the book tour has been uh, been a lot of fun to do. We've uh, uh, be headed back to Washington uh, tomorrow, but then be back out on the road again on Monday. And um, so a good part of September we'll be uh, out visiting uh, various places around the country. Um, um, tonight I'm going to appear at the uh, Nixon Library here in uh, in uh, California, and uh, so I I've enjoyed it. You get, really get a chance to see a lot of people. Some of them old friends, some of them new ones, uh, but there are a lot of people out there who are vitally and, and deeply and legitimately interested in some of the issues I write about in the book, and uh, it's fun to have a chance to exchange views with all of them and. Um, see what uh, what they've got to suggest as well in my time the book and in your time what are you most proud of mm. well i uh I think about it from a policy standpoint uh, especially over the last eight years uh, what i feel best about is the fact that we were able to prevent any further mass casualty attacks against the united states after 9 11 we were able to put in place uh policies that allowed us to to uh, block all for their major uh, major terrorist attacks, and I think that was was very important to do. I think we saved thousands of lives, and, and uh, I think the president deserves a lot of credit for um, how that was handled. People forget that in those days and weeks and months following, the anticipation was that there would be follow-on attacks, and as you point out, we dodged those bullets thanks to a lot of good folks in the military and our intelligence services and leaders like you, Mr. Vice President. Thank you so much for being with us. The book is In My Time. 
by Vice President Dick Cheney and his daughter Liz. I strongly recommend it. And we'll be back with more of the Steve Yell Show in just a moment. 